Many people wonder about the existence of UFOs and aliens. Some even speculate that the government knows about them and is hiding information. The question still remains, is there life on other planets? Dr. Hugh Ross is an astrophysicist who believes in God. You have to have a just right star where the planet's a certain distance from that star. The planet has to be a particular size. Dr. Ross has examined the farthest reaches of the universe and offers his ideas about life on other planets that are scientific and biblically based. Well, Dr. Hugh Ross is here. He's written a book called, quote, Lights in the Sky and Little Green Men. Dr. Ross, is so good to see you. How come you're into this stuff? Well, all began when I was 16. I was uh, organizing the Astronomy Club in Vancouver, Canada uh -huh. to have a booth at the Pacific National Exhibition, and they put us right next to the Flying Saucer Club. So without any intention, I wound up becoming, quote, an expert in UFOs because people would talk to them and say, what do you think? <laughs> and every university where I served at, I processed the UFO reports. Well, what are they? Is there any uh, life out there? Or is this all this is fiction? Well, I mean, we are aware as astronomers that there could be as many as a trillion, trillion planets in the universe. Uh-huh. And uh, they've now discovered and measured over 4,100 planets beyond the solar system. But what's interesting is that none of them are like any of the planets in our solar system, mm -hmm. which led to the interesting discovery. Every one of the eight planets plays a critical role in making advanced life possible here on Earth. So while many astronomers think maybe we can find microbes on other planets, the idea that we're going to find life like us, I mean, that we now know that that's an extremely remote possibility. Well, you know, your book about our incredible planet is so moving because you go into detail about all the wonderful things that we have on Earth that other planets don't have to support life. It's, an, it's unbelievable. You, you, your studies in that is, is so f much uh, well, faithful. Well, my peers focus on the water habitable zone, the liquid yeah. water habitable zone but there are 12 other known habitable zones. And for a planet to be truly habitable, it must simultaneously reside in all 13 of those zones. Mm -hmm. And there's only one planet that we've seen in the entire universe that does reside in all those zones. And I'll let you and your viewers guess which one that is. <laughs> well, you've gone into detail, though, in this book about about all the people who believe in Area 51, about little space invaders of strange uh, people with big heads and weak bodies and, and E.T. calling home and so forth. Well, how has this spread so widely in our society? Well, millions of people claim to have had encounters with UFOs. And the vast majority you can explain as simply natural phenomena or human activity or a hoax. But there's a 1% residual that actually you can show is real, but not physical. Now, I had Carl Sagan as a professor briefly when I was at the University of Toronto, and he denied UFOs totally. That's because his worldview did not permit the existence of non-physical reality. As a Christian, I realized God created two different species of intelligent beings humans that are physical and real, mm -hmm. and angels yeah. that are real but not physical. And when you examine this 1% residual of the UFO sightings, you see that they consistently violate the laws of physics, but nevertheless you can prove they're real. For example, there are literally hundreds of places where UFOs are crashed into the ground. You go to the site, the ground is depressed, vegetation is damaged, snow is melted if there's snow that's there. Uh, obviously something real happened there, but there's no debris, there's no artifacts. And when the UFO is observed coming through the atmosphere, let's say 18 to 25,000 miles per hour, no sonic boom, no heat friction. If it was a physical object, you would get a sonic boom and heat friction, and there'd be debris at the crash site. So we're dealing with something that obviously is real, but it's not physical. And I'm not the only physicist that's saying this. Uh, I know of a half dozen other physicists and astronomers who are not believers who draw the same conclusion that I do, 
that whatever is behind the occult and witchcraft and demonology is also behind this residual of the UFO encounter. Residual? What do angels do? What do you think? Why isn't there some evidence of their, of their presence? Well, because uh, I mean, there is evidence. Hmm. I'm saying that there's clear evidence that something real is happening. Uh, and there's evidence that it's not physical. They violate the laws of physics, so it's non-physical reality. Jacques Vallée, who is not a believing uh, UFO investigator, says it's interdimensional phenomena. He believes there are beings operating in dimensions beyond the universe, which is very compatible with what the Bible says about angels and demons. Tell me about what would an angel do? I mean, uh, you know, you mentioned the incredible distances between planets. How do angels travel between them? Well, they're not subject to the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. So it's things like the velocity of light aren't a problem for them, or the fact that there's particles in interstellar space that would destroy your spaceship. We know these can't be physical craft coming to the Earth because uh, they would have to travel so far, and uh, if they were to travel at a high velocity, uh, the beings on board would be killed. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're dealing with something that's not subject to these laws of physics and angels fit into that category. The other thing that's interesting is the closer the encounter that people have with UFOs, yes. it's 100% deleterious. Nobody has a positive experience, and which is why I believe it's the fallen angels that are responsible for this phenomena. And I think what I write about in the book mm -hmm. is that you see a correlation between the degree of occult activity in yes. an individual's life and their UFO experiences. And I end the book by saying this is scientifically testable. Close the doors to occult activity. That will be the end of these UFO experiences. The reverse is also true. If you open up these occult things, uh, don't be surprised if you get these kinds of visits and it's not going to be pleasant. Well, so these are fallen angels? That means they're demonic spirits that are causing this phenomenon? Is it? I'm convinced that they're demonic. And again, I'm not alone in drawing this conclusion amongst scientists who have studied this phenomenon. I think what's unique to us is that we're putting a Christian perspective on it and saying, you know, here's how you can put it to the test scientifically. So I actually say these are ways you open up doors to the occult. It also explains why, for example, uh, you know, I've spoken UFOs frequently uh, in the Soviet era in Russia. And uh, that's when the scientific community was involved in occult physics. And that opened up the doors for these demons to influence and explains why they're having way more UFO experiences than people here in America. Well, they, these people talk about being captured and taken into a spacecraft and carried into other places. Are, are demon spirits doing that, actually, you think? Yeah, I don't think they're actually being physically taken into a physical craft. Okay. It's the demons taking control of them where they begin to think that this is what's happened to them. That's why we have a chapter in the book on abductions. Uh -huh. and, uh, but abductees are people who typically have had very close encounters with UFOs. It was a physicist, Alan Hynek, who was sponsored by the U.S. government to study UFOs, mm -hmm. who came up with encounters of the first kind, second kind, third kind, fourth kind. And as you go from one to four, you're having a closer and closer encounter. And in cases of communications of uh, three and four, people are actually communicating with these spirit beings. So, for example, uh, there is the Urantia book, which was communicated by these uh, demons. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was done through automatic writing, 4,000-page book. A third of it is denying the deity of Jesus Christ. So it kind of gives you an idea who's really behind so, all this. So these demons are actually causing people to have delusions. They think they're being taken captive. They think, and there's always some uh, evil at the end of it. There's right, uh, but there's a way out. Yeah, okay. Close the doors to the occult. That'll eliminate these experiences. These demons need permission to invade your life. Mm. And uh, that's, you know, a lot of what's going on. And the other thing I point out is this is not a new phenomenon. It's been around for thousands of years. But the demons keep pace with our technology. Yeah. UFOs 100 years ago were slow-moving dirigibles in the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they're flying saucers at uh, 18,000 miles per hour. 
Um, and then the, the information they give you about the universe is keeping pace. But this, this is incredible. The, 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 the demons are actually keeping pace with our science and, and bringing these, these um, delusions to people. Uh, well, that would be a good strategy for the demons who are intent on deceiving us about what's really going on in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense uh, from their perspective that they would keep pace with our technology. Well, do the good angels uh, have a counterbalancing uh, uh, force? Well, it tells you in Hebrews 13, too, that many have entertained the good angels unawares. Yes. Uh, God sends these uh, righteous angels to assist uh, humans in their Christian ministry, and uh, they come and go. Uh, but likewise, they're also part of this non-physical reality, but they're on God's side as opposed to Satan's side. Well, you remember when they went into the Promised Land, the, the Joshua, uh, you know, found the, the, the army of the Lord was there with him, and he, that was angelic. So that was he, angelic. They're, yeah, as I said, God created two different species of intelligent beings. Incredible, incredible. Well, let me ask you, uh, in terms of, you know, I know they've got something they put out called creation science, and. Uh, you have done such a marvelous job of showing to the Christian uh, population the uh, truth of, of the origins of life and the beginning of our universe. Uh, what are we looking at? Is it 14, 15 billion years? Is that about the... the, the... Well, the age of the universe has uh, been measured to be 13.8 billion years. 13.8. And we actually have telescopes where we can look far enough back in time that we're actually watching of mm -hmm. uh, the universe being created literally within a hundred billionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second of the cosmic creation event. Incredible. Explains why we astronomers are coming forth with such compelling scientific evidence uh, for the God of the Bible and the Christian faith, because we can directly observe events in the past. Uh, well, is the Big Bang the whole thing? I mean, there apparently was a a tiny, was there any matter, the tiny bit that was compressed, then it exploded and became the universe that we know of? Well, the universe, when it was created, was an infinitesimal volume. But God created it dynamically, where it was expanding right from the cosmic creation event. Mm -hmm. and continues to expand to this day. But one of the compelling evidences is that there's a supernatural being designing it. It's expanding at exactly the right rate, at exactly the right time throughout all of cosmic history to make advanced life possible on one planet. I mean, what's behind the UFO thing is the idea there's all these planets with intelligent beings on it. And uh, we now know a couple of papers just got published making the point, if there is intelligent life in the universe, it's got to come after us because it takes a minimum of 13.8 billion years to prepare the universe for advanced life. So we have to be the first of the physical intelligent it took beings. The, the entire universe, that was your premise, and I think it's so right. fascinating, that this enormous universe was, was, was designed to have life here on this one planet, and, and we're the uh, uh, epicenter. You literally need the whole universe to be exactly the size that it is and the age that it is with all the matter and energy that's in it to get one planet in which advanced life is possible. The whole universe exists to make our existence possible. You know, <laughs> that's an overwhelming statement. And so well, <laughs> it tells you how much God must care and love for us that yeah. he was prepared to create all this stuff to make our existence possible. So we're pretty special. So, you know, I was reading and Paul talking about that the church uh, to show the principalities and powers, the wisdom of God, that, that he was centered in the church. So the Christian people are pretty important, then, aren't they? They are. And we humans are very important. And the redemptive message that, or that God is trying to achieve is crucial. I'm writing books now making the point that every event in the universe, Earth and Earth's life, and every component of the universe, Earth and Earth's life, was designed to play a role to make possible the redemption of billions of human beings from sin and evil. I believe the whole universe was created with a fundamental purpose in mind. That the whole, that, that we are the center of the, so what we do is extremely important. Winning people to Jesus is a, is a, is a huge thing then in the cosmos. It is. 
Yeah, the cosmos was designed for evangelism, to put it bluntly. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's good news for all, all of us who are trying to win people to the Lord. But, uh, well, that's why I'm so passionate about bringing people to faith in Christ. Sure. Just looking at the universe and realizing it was designed for that very purpose. Where do you see the end of it? Do, do, do you, do, is there any forecasting of how long it's going to go on? There is in the sense that we realize that it took this minimum time to open up a narrow window in which we humans could exist in a civilized state. We knew that the window opened up less than 100,000 years ago, and it's going to close in less than 100,000 years. Uh, and some think that it's going to close within thousands of years or less. So, yeah, we're nearing the end of the window of time. Well, it, will it burn with fervent heat? Is that the idea? That is, I mean, it, the, the whole thing... Well, it tells us that in Isaiah and Second yeah. Peter, that the end of the universe, it'll be rolled up like a scroll and end in a fiery heat. And there are actually uh, Big Bang creation models that predict that very thing. That will come, come back to that, that the, the one day that... What, what is, does the sun explode? I mean, as far as we're concerned, what, what happens? Well, if you wait long enough, uh, the sun will get so bright that it'll incinerate the earth. But that's a good four billion years away. I, I'm, I'm so. not sure I'm going to be that old. <laughs> right. But th this is fascinating. And I appreciate the work you do. And, the, and that, that book on the incredible planet, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't got a copy, you ought to get it. It'll, it, it'll build your faith like nothing you've ever seen. And this is interesting. Lights in the sky, little green man. Uh, is this Pat, if people are interested in that, we're actually offering a free chapter at uh, reasons.org slash 700. Oh, oh That's the place uh, a get free the chapter, reason. Uh, so they want to see what the book is about, and we give them a little taste Thank of that. You. Dr. Ross, you, you're a treasure, and you're going to be lecturing to our, our, our faculty at Regent. For, be doing that tomorrow. Well, yeah. I, it'll be wonderful. I look forward to it. Well, thank you so much. Hugh Ross, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to have your faith built about what great God we serve, this is the guy that will tell you about it.